What's up, guys? Welcome back to Sonic Academy. I'm Nate Robnimer from Protoculture and Shadow Chronicles, and I got another how to use video for you guys today. We are checking out Steinberg's brand new Backbone plugin. It's a drum resynthesizer slash sampler that does a whole bunch of cool stuff. Let's dive in and check it out. Right, so here we have Backbone. Uh, let me first say that this is a Steinberg plugin, but it's not native to Cubase. It comes in AAX format, AU. Uh, so you can use this in Logic if you're in Ableton, whatever. Um, it's not limited to Cubase users. And um, yeah, so typically I would normally go through every single control in a how to use video, but I think in this case, there's a lot going on here, and um, it's going to be more beneficial if we actually look at a couple of sort of practical use um, cases. So I'm going to very quickly run through the basic operation of this and the layout, and then we'll kind of dive in and edit some samples. So you've got a load page up at the top here. You can bring up the library. And you have a choice between programs and layers. Uh, programs will be a full setup using multiple different layers, and layers you can actually load in individually. If you click on the layer itself, you can also load uh, layers into any of the eight slots available. Um, everything is drag and drop compatible as well. So what I'm going to do to start off with is just bring in a drum sample from Sonic Academy's Ultimate Drums 1. I'm going to grab a dubstep snare. And let's just bring that in. Right, so now you see we've activated all our modules here. We've got the um, sample editor over here, the recent pitch module, filter module, and amp module. The If you click on any of these, you'll get a sort of expanded view. The sample editor, we can turn off the loop over here. You have various options here uh, for trimming your samples, setting up loops, etc. Uh, this will be quite familiar if you've used Groove Agent or Halion um, or even the Cubase sampler that's built in. A number of different functions up here, as well as some zooming controls uh, for when you're working with envelopes at the bottom. Um, we've got the recent page. This will come to in just a little bit. This is where most of the magic happens. Um, then you also have some typical sampler modules. You've got a pitch module, uh, a pitch envelope. You can change the envelope amount. You've got sort of a global um, envelope uh, amount that you can adjust the entire envelope. As I said, some zooming controls that will zoom in, and you can enable the waveform display as well over there. Uh, same goes for the filter section. Yeah, you've got a couple of different filter models that you can select from. You've got some distortion algorithms as well. And then you'll see the similar controls. These are all pretty self-explanatory and obviously an envelope control as well for that. And then your gain section or your amp section. Uh, yeah, you should just take note of the FX routing. We'll come to that in a bit, but you can route between bus one and two. And you have some controls for width, panning, etc. Again, an uh, envelope control here, and you can set up your envelope in this window. Clicking over here will take you back to the sort of main section. Now, I want to dive into the decompose algorithm and show you a couple of usage, uh, usage scenarios for Backbone. The first one I want to look at is tuning your drum samples. So we've got a sample loaded in. And you can yeah, pick the sample because there's a fair amount of tonality in the snare. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to click this pre-listen up at the top here. Now, the problem with tuning a drum traditionally with a normal sampler is we can just go up the key, seeing it's mapped to C3. If we play higher up, you get a higher pitch, obviously, but the sort of the noise section of the snare is being pitched up as well and obviously getting shorter as you go up. So what we can do now is we can hit the pre-listen button and we'll leave these settings here. There's a couple of settings that will tune how the tonal sections are pulled out from the noise. And this is all coming from the SpectraLive technology that Steinberg does, um, but they've kind of put it into a really easy, usable format for you. Um, we can now solo the tonal aspect, and we can solo the noise. Now this is gonna require a little bit of tweaking here. Uh, let's just try and get that sort of punch from the tonal side. Set the pre-listen again. 
We'll dial up the sensitivity. And let's just pull back on the cutoff slightly. So there's kind of the, the tonal section that I'm really wanting to tune is that sort of like almost Tom kind of sounding sine wave pop that we've got there. So now that I'm happy with that, uh, we can unsolo that. There's our snare again, and we're gonna hit apply. So apply decompose will split the two into separate layers so we can edit them individually. So if we mute this one now, that's the noise section. We've got just the tonality. Can solo the noise. Cool. So now we're still pitching up the noise when we're moving up the scale. But what I'm going to do is on the noise uh, layer, we're going to go grab the pitch section and we're going to turn key follow all the way down. So if we solo this now, playing different keys has no effect on the noise at all. But seeing as key follow is still enabled on the tonal section, we can now tune the kick drum or the, the snare drum to whatever key we want without affecting any of the noise at all. Uh, furthermore, if you look on the sample editor for the tonal section, you can click on this pitch analysis tool here and it's going to find the pitch uh, for this tonal part of your snare drum. Um, now, this is currently mapped to C3, as you see here. If you want to actually map that to its proper key, you can actually click this little button and it will move it to the C3 range, but in the correct key. So let's do that, and we'll see it's now on G sharp 3. So G sharp or, or A flat is going to give us the original sound that we had. Now, let's say we wanted to write a track in E flat. All we need to do is play in E flat. And the tonal section is perfectly in tune with E flat, but it's left the noise component completely alone. Which is fantastic. Such a cool feature that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab another sample now, and we're going to do something pretty similar but just uh, look at a few different options working with kick drums so I'm going to grab a trance kick drum from the same sound bank we'll take something like this that's got quite a bit of sort of high end uh, noise to it as well we'll bring that into the sampler and there we go so now we can do the same thing again um, by pre-listening. Uh, we'll solo the tone. So there's the tonal elements or the sub-elements of the kick. And there's the noise section. So hitting apply, and again, we can actually separate those two out. And now we can edit them. So the same thing goes. Now we can actually apply a pitch envelope. Let's say we like the top end, but we want to add a little bit more bite to the the pitch on the, the actual sub elements. We can add a pitch envelope that won't affect the click at all. So by adding in some envelope now, we've got a far more punchy kick, but we've still got the still got the top end and the noise elements intact. Let's just turn off the looping for this again. Now, when you're working with these sub-elements, you're still working with a waveform. Uh, so what I prefer to do with these sub-elements is to use Sonic Academy's own kick to um, drum synthesizer. Now, there's an excellent way of using the two of these together. And I'm going to show you that now. If we mute our... A tonal element. I'm going to just move this out the way and bring in a copy of kick two. And I've got the default patch loaded, uh, but I've removed the click samples from, um, from this patch. So with the, uh, the noise element from this soloed, I'm going to use the export function from backbone to get it into kick two. 
And it, this is, it's really quite clever. You do have an export, uh, you can bring up an export window that you can define where you want to export the files to. But you also have this little button. Um, you've got some export settings as well, 24-bit, whatever. You can uh, dial that in as you see fit, uh, which key you want to export, etc. cetera. Um, but this little arrow button here, all you need to do is click that, drag that into Kick 2. And when we jump back into Kick 2, you'll see now that we have the click sample that we've extracted from that original kick drum that we had in Backbone. And we've now placed it inside of Kick 2. So all we have to do now is jump into the pitch envelope for the sub element and we can... We can sort of resynthesize a... or synthesize a sub element for that click the way that we see fit. And obviously, Kick 2's got some great features, you know, being able to lock nodes to keys, etc. And also remember, this is synthesized, so you can drag out your kicks a lot longer. Uh, you're not going to get any degradation by stretching out samples and so on. So just, it's a dream come true being able to switch between the two so quickly uh, to really get sort of maximum control over your kick drums. There are a couple of other cool things that you can do, though, with Backbone, uh, even when the sub-elements are being used. Let's say, for example, your sub-element is maybe a little bit too short. There's a really nice little feature using the resynthesis module, uh, which we haven't looked at yet. I'm going to bring back the sample endpoint to somewhere here where we've got quite a bit of tonal stuff happening. We've got this nice sort of sine wave. That's where a lot of the tone of the kick is coming from. So you can see we've shortened it up quite a bit now. Now let's jump into the resynthesizer part. And what this is going to do is it's going to extract all the harmonics that you can play around with harmonics and, and, and so forth. Uh, you can change the speed of the sample. Uh, the purity will basically shift it more uh, to sort of atonal sounds. Pushing that up will make it more sort of pure sine wave kind of sound. So you can play around with these settings as you see fit. Uh, but what I wanted to show you here, now that we've shortened this kick sample, you can use the spectral hold um, button over here. If we turn that on, and let's go and adjust our amp envelope. Let's just drag this out and watch what happens. You can kind of infinitely just extend the length of that tonal element as far as you see fit. You can even turn this into a uh, bass patch if you want. Seeing as it actually follows the key tracking as well. So a really cool little feature that as well, especially for you working with sort of like 808 kicks and things if you want to extend them out further. It's a really, really clever little tool to be able to use on your kick drums. Now, it's also not entirely limited to using drum sounds either. There's a lot you can do with um, with other samples as well. Uh, your imagination is really the limit here. You can bring in effect samples. You can extract tonal elements from um, bass hits and so forth uh, for creating sort of like layered uh, orchestral brahms. It's fantastic for that kind of thing as well. Uh, I've uh, had a play around with this. I brought in some vocal samples and managed to extract noise elements from vocal samples uh, that I was able to turn into hi-hats, um, and that sounded fantastic. So I'll just, uh, just to show you that as well, I'm just going to bring in uh, just like a bass hit. I'll bring in a sample like this. We'll drop that in. So obviously that gets mapped to the keyboard, so you can play that as a sampler. Uh, the decomposer will work with that as well. So you can split those into various different layers as well. Uh, the resynthesis on samples like this is great as well. You can slow these down. Let's play around with the formant controls as well. So you can really kind of shape those sounds into something new. Uh, from the gain page, you can click sustain and uh, we'll just 
check our envelope. We'll bring this back so we have a short release. So now you can play it more like a synth patch. And also if you jump into the main section, you have some settings here for various key mapping options and so on. You'll notice it's currently playing in mono. Um, in the pitch section, you can turn on a, a glide option. Or in the settings section here, you'll notice if you disable the mono, you actually get a polyphony amount that you can set here. And now you can play the patches polyphonically. So you really can go to town with different uh, sounds. Um, one last little thing for kind of creating sweep effects, for example, uh, we'll load up a effects patch from uh, Ultimate Effects from Sonic Academy. And let's grab, we'll grab an impact, grab an impact sample, and then let's grab a sweep. Let's do a short up like this. And we'll place that one there. So let's mute this one first. So we've got our short up. We'll set this to sustain again. And now our impact, for example, we can set this to, on the sample editor page, to trigger on note off. So when we play this together now, we'll be triggering the short up, and as soon as we release the key, we'll trigger the impact sample. So we'll take a listen to that now. So fantastic way to create sort of big effect sweeps and so on. You can layer these up as much as you want and trigger them from either the notes off or the notes on. Uh, things can be reversed from your, uh, you really can go to town with uh, how you edit these these samples. Um, and like I said, obviously the load, you've got quite a lot of different, if we load up a program, you'll see there's quite a number of examples like this. Let's take cinematic, for example. We'll load a cinematic patch. And yeah, you've got sort of tonal noise and slam elements. So not entirely limited to drum sampling at all. You can really do a bunch of very, very clever stuff with this. And let's just take a look at the effects section now as well. Um, there is quite flexible routing with the effects. The default will be serial. And as I said, you can select which bus in the amp section your various samples go to just by fading between the two of them. Um, you can also choose to, let's say for instance, route to serial four. These will run one, two, three, four, and then five, six, and seven would basically all be rooted into effect eight. So you could add like a master EQ or a limiter, although you do actually have a built-in limiter into the uh, plugin as well. And there's a number of different effects that you can choose from here. You have uh, these actually all from Cubase, um, the uh, stock plugins. You have EQ, graphic EQ, DJ EQ. You have some filtering, um, compressor, limiter, Distortion bit crusher, the modulation effects, the ring mod and frequency shifter are particularly useful because you can get some really nice metallic tones out of that. Um, for percussion, that's a, uh, those are really great. Um, you've also got a stereo panning control and delays and reverbs at your disposal. So yeah, this uh, basically brings us to the end of this video. Um, all in all, it's a really, really clever little piece of software. This uh, I, I was quite amazed at how um, uh, how much control it gives you over your drum sample. So if you are somebody that likes to have a lot of control over sounds or you're wanting to kind of really take control of your drum sample library and create something completely unique, this is really a fantastic tool to have at uh, your disposal. So highly recommend it. Go check this one out. It's Backbone from Steinberg. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will catch you soon right here at Sonic Academy. Cheers. 
thanks everybody for watching commenting and indeed liking we really do appreciate all the support we get here on our sonic academy youtube channel so if you find this video super useful please we'd love you to hit the subscribe button we update the uh, youtube channel every week with new content and if you want to watch some more relevant content just click on the videos beside me